I have a message entitled, Put Your Hand to the Plow. Turn with me to Luke chapter 9. We'll begin in verse 57. And it reads, Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, I don't stay in Marriott's and Hilton's. And no, he said, foxes have holes and birds have the air of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Verse 59. Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And then another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. Verse 62, this is our text. And Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we desire today to lay our hand to the plow. We seek and desire to turn over the fallow ground so that seed of God's Word could be sown into that ground. We seek to be your plowmen in the earth today so that we can advance the kingdom, so that we can preach the gospel to all those that need to hear it, which is all. And so, Father God, we pray that this, this message this morning would stir within us our calling and our responsibility and our ministry to be people of the plow, to put our hands on the plow, and to follow that plow in the turning of the fallow ground so the seed can be sown. There's much to do, but we're not the type, Lord, that puts our hand to the plow and looks back. We look forward. We're going forward. We're moving forward. We are moving forward in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen and amen. Uh, Luke 9 and Luke 10 have always been near and dear to my heart because they are so packed with uh, events that are just that capture the imagination stir your faith really they are phenomenal and in Luke 9 you see Jesus commissioning the 12 anointing the 12 giving authority to the 12 over all demons over all sickness and he sends them out to preach the gospel of the kingdom and to heal the sick and uh, what a great celebration that is. And then in Luke 10, the next chapter, he sends out the 70 to do the same. And in between those, he's feeding the 5,000. He's going up onto the Mount of Transfiguration. He, he is getting from his disciples the revelation. Who do men say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I mean, there's just so much happening in these two chapters, Luke chapter 9 and Luke chapter 10. And, and uh, you know, as a minister, the commission, the calling of, of God to, to go forth and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Take authority over devils to heal all that are sick before you. And then they come back with a great rejoicing. Even devils were subject to us. It's so very exciting. Uh, to me. But in the midst of the commissioning and the sending out, we have in this passage that we just read in Luke chapter 9 that there was a calling on uh, several people, two, three people here, that Jesus called them, Come and follow me. And the response to the calling was, Yes, I will do that, but first, I need to do something else. But first, uh, the ifs, the ands, and the buts. <laughs> but first, <laughs> that, but 
is the word that undoes commitment. <laughs> I will do it, but. <laughs> I will do it, but first I've got to do something completely different. And didn't Jesus tell us in Matthew 6 that we're to seek first the kingdom of God? <laughs> the kingdom comes before the but. <laughs> Everything else in your life comes after, but, but the kingdom comes first. And what did they say? Lord, I will do it, but first I need to bury the dead. But first I need to say farewell to family. And Jesus says, no, the dead needs to bury the dead. What we need to bury is our but first, <laughs> is our selfishness, our self-desire. Uh, and we need to be selfless and sacrificing and following after the Lord. The calling of God is not a negotiation. It is a sacrifice. It is a surrender. We used to sing, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my precious Savior. I surrender all. Did I get the words right? Blessed Savior, yeah. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. The, the, I don't know where that song went, <laughs> but the sentiment is good. <laughs> I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. The calling of God is not a negotiation. I will follow you, but first I need to do something else. The calling of God is a surrender. Yes, Lord. All I am, all I ever will be, all I have is yours. All to you, Lord. My utmost for your highest. Come on, church. All I am, all I ever will be. For your glory in Jesus' name. If there's anything that needs to be buried, it is our flesh. Let the dead bury the dead. <laughs> our flesh needs to be dead in the name of Jesus. If we need to be saying farewell to anybody, it's our flesh. Say, where, say farewell to flesh. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but the life I live, I live by Faith in the Son of God who loved me and died for me. My flesh is crucified with Christ. Let the dead bury the dead. Come on, church. And so when he said, come, follow me, and they said, we absolutely will. When we get around to it, when it's convenient for us, we'll catch up with you. I got some things to do first. And let me tell you, that is not the response that the Lord is looking for. You say, well, this is too difficult. He, this is, but he's making a point here. He's making a point. And the point is, what is first? What is foremost? What is at the top of the list of the priorities when it comes to following Jesus? I'll follow you, but first I got to do. I'll follow you, but first I'll catch up with you then. No, it is not a negotiation. It is a surrender, and the church said amen and amen. Now, he makes this observation after their responses, and the observation is in Luke 9 and 62. And Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Wow! That's powerful stuff right there. No one, so we're talking to everybody here. This is, this is something that applies to everybody. No one having put his hand to the plow of God's service, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back. What were they looking back at? The, the dead. What were they looking back at? Farewell to old friends. They were looking back at the old life. No one putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God, putting his hand to the plow. Isn't that vivid imagery right there? He's wanting you to understand what serving the Lord is like, putting, his, putting your hand to the plow. Now, a plow is a tool that is used to turn over dirt, uh, to break up the fallow ground. Fallow ground just simply means seedless ground, ground where seed has not been sown yet. And over a period of time, because it hasn't had any vegetation, uh, it, it can just grow very, very hard and firm. And so the, the plowing, the tilling of the soil is a very 
difficult process because you're dragging an instrument through ground that is hardened over time. Uh, how many of y'all know hearts can harden over time? How many of y'all know churches can harden over time? Yeah, sure can. And, and so you're, you're dragging something through the ground. It's now it's sharp on the end and it's designed to cut through, but you're still having to power your way through a, a hardened soil. And you may hit rocks, you may hit stones, you may hit roots, you may hit all sorts of uh, obstructions, but you are designed and called to plow your way through that ground. Why? Because you want, listen, you want to turn a desert into a garden. You want to change it. It needs seed. It needs a, if you want a harvest, you're going to have to plow. Did you hear me? You can't put seed on the surface of hard soil and not expect the the birds to come eat them up. What what did Jesus say? There's four types of soil. There's the rocky soil, the wayward soil, the thorny soil, and the good soil. And if you sow in the rocky soil, the, the birds just come and eat it up. I've done it before. I put grass seed out without digging it in. And the crows just had such a good lunch. They loved it, man. They loved it. Thank you. Do it again. Do it again. I learned my lesson. You, you, got, to, you got to get the seed below the surface. Amen. That means you got to get below the surface. You've got to break up that fallow ground. What does the Bible say? Judah plows. Judah plows. Judah means praise. Praise plows. That's why in a church service, you're always going to have the praise and the worship. Normally, you have that first. Why? Because it softens the soil. It plows. Judah plows. Praise plows. It breaks up the fallow ground. Why? Because I'm going to sow some seed. The preacher has got seed to sow. The seed of God's Word, Mark chapter 4, the seed of God's Word has to be sown into the heart. Not every heart is prepared for that seed. There is hard rock. There is thorny soil. There is wayward soil. But you're wanting to get to the good soil. I remember um, uh, ministering. I won't use me as an example. I'll use a friend. I remember talking to uh, someone that had a traveling ministry. He's an evangelist. Traveling ministry. And so I hadn't talked to him for some time. And I said, well, how are things going? How, how are things uh, doing in your ministry? He said, oh, I was just out of place. I had to plow. The plowing was so hard. Now, he's going into a different church every week. Different church, sometimes two, three times a week, he's in a different place. So he's, he's used to seeing every sort of situation in different churches. Boy, that takes an anointing, doesn't it? And so I said, well, how's it going? He said, I was just at a place I had to really plow. I knew instantly what he was talking about. He had to get in there, and because the soil of the church had grown hard. He, he said, I thought I was going to sow, but I went having to plow first. He said, I thought I was going to sow the seed of God's goodness, of God's healing, of God's uh, prosperity, of God's blessings. But when I started talking about the goodness of God, the healing of God, the prosperity of God, all I got was blank stares back at me. The ground had not been prepared. He said, he said, this seed was bouncing off the ground, bouncing off the ground. They weren't receiving that God's a healer. In fact, they were probably believing that God had made them sick, that God was taking stuff away from them, not trying to get stuff to them. That instead of God being good, God was mad at them. That's, that's probably what they were thinking. A lot of Christians do. And so he said, as I was trying to sow those good words, I, I realized my seed was bouncing off hard soil. I had to plow. I had to get that 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 fallow, that seedless ground. I had to break it up first, and then I could sow into the ground. My concern about COVID and distance from church and, and the whole entire body of Christ in the earth today, I mean, this has touched every church, every denomination. Every, I'm, my concern is that distance away is complacency. Complacency is hardness of heart. Come on now. Somebody help me out today. That, that, that our heart begins 
become, starts to become used to. Our heart becomes comfortable with. Our heart gets used to not being under the anointing where we're entering into praise and worship to break up the fallow ground, to receive the Word of God. Now, we preach on the, on the Internet. We're thankful for the Internet. We usually live stream on the Internet. We're having different de- technical problems today, but be it that as it may, we're still going to post the Word later on. We're thankful that people watch the Word. I mean, last Sunday, with one of our posted uh, videos, we had 1,200 people watch that video. Well, I went back into the statistics of it, and I realized only 30% of them made it all the way to the end of our sermon. So in the first few minutes, we, we 50% dropped out. I thought, Lord, okay, wait, oh God, we go, that we got to really hook them in the first few minutes, Debbie. But listen, those were folks that tuned in and tuned out. I had them for a few minutes. I got you for the whole time. Glory to God. I had them for a few minutes, but then they tuned in. That's that's part of the challenge of technology. Yeah, it goes far and wide, but how long does it linger? We call it channel surfing. You watch a channel for about three seconds. Then you're on to the next one. Then you're on to the next one. Then you're on to the next one. And even if you find something that you like, you're only with it to the first commercial. Then you're checking out the football game five times channels back. Am I right? Y'all understand what I'm talking about? We're used to floating, 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 and we're not taking time. Oh, praise the Lord. We're not taking time for the Holy Spirit to break up the fallow ground so that the seed of God's Word can get on the inside of us. Why? We need a harvest. There's got to be a harvest. If the seed never gets in, the harvest never comes. You got to get the harvest. That's why you plow. You, you get the harvest. Now, you plow looking forward. You never plow looking back. You shouldn't. Because if you plow looking back, that, what's behind you? The comfort of not plowing. You were sitting under a shade tree. Everything was good. Everything was comfortable. You weren't sweating. It was easy. And then Jesus says, come on, put your hand to the plow. Let's break up some fallow ground. Let's get some seed sown. Let's get some ministry going here. Let's build something for Jesus. Is it going to be easy? No, it's plowing, man. It's hard. But if you want to sow seed, you got to break up the fallow ground. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But what's behind you is easy. I said, what's behind you is easy. It's easier for Jamie and Debbie to sit in our living room and share the Word of God from our living room. Why? Because we live there. (laughs) That's easy. Getting up at 5 in the morning. Come on, church. Driving an hour to get here. Having, to, having all of our wonderful team turning on all the lights and getting everything ready. And I thank God for the, our technical team and our music team and our usher team and everybody that does everything so wonderfully. Thank God. But it takes plowing. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's work. But once you put your hand to the plow. Listen, the, the most important moment in a person's life is when Jesus says put your hand to the plow and they put their hand to the plow and they're going to make a decision right then am I looking forward or am I looking back is there is there folks I got to say farewell to is there somebody I got to bury behind me is there something else I got to do Lord I'll plow but first I got to go do something else no when you put your hand to the plow that is when you make the most important decision of your life and that is my hands are going to stay on this plow I'm looking forward we're going to break up the ground the seed is coming and then the harvest hallelujah 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 youth ministry is not easy is it worship ministry is not easy is it technical ministry is not easy is it Usher ministry, security ministry, it's not easy, is it? There's nothing easy. It's work. It's plowing. But it's fruitful because that's where the harvest comes from. Paul, are teenagers easy? No, but it's plowing. It's a harvest is going to come. I said a harvest is going to come. 
Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus told him right up front, it ain't easy. He was honest. Lord, I'll follow you wherever you go. He said, uh, he said I'm not staying in the Hilton tonight. I'm not staying in the Marriott Suites. I'm not living on the concierge floor. You know, the birds have a nest and a fox has a den. I got nothing. He said, I don't have a place to lay my head. You still want to follow me? This ain't easy. I said, it's not an easy life. But it's the fruitful life. It's the best life. Oh, it's the best life. Come on, somebody. It's the best life. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told Debbie, I said, after COVID, there's going to be some rebuilding to do. There's going to be some rebuilding to do. Put your hand to the plow. There's going to be some rebuilding to do. That's what she said to me. Put your hand to the plow. And um, she nailed it. That's why I'm preaching it today. There's, there's going to be some rebuilding. You, you know what our president said? He said, I built the best economy this country has ever seen, and I'll build it again. Yeah. You, know, you know, whether you like him or not. That my point is, here's a guy that says, I've done it once, I'll do it again. I've done it once, I'll do it again. You know, there, I, I heard a testimony of a millionaire. He said, listen, it's better to learn how to become a millionaire than somebody give you a million dollars. Because if you learn how to become a millionaire and you lose it, you know how to do it again. <laughs> if, you, if somebody gives you a million dollars and you lose it, you're out. You, you, didn't know, you didn't know how to get it the first time around. Listen, rebuilding something, because you're, you're rebuilding better. You're rebuilding bigger. You're going farther. The, 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 the plow is digging deeper. There's more seed to be sown. Glory to God. And, and so you put your hand to the plow and you make the most important decision of your life. I am going to spend my life looking forward. I'm not going to spend my life looking backwards. Glory to God. What's behind me doesn't attract me. What is in front of me is my harvest, is the fruitfulness, is the benefit of my labor. Glory to God. That's what kept the children of Israel out of the promised land. They couldn't get Egypt out of their hearts. They were always looking back. And when they got right to the threshold of the promised land and they heard the stories about the giants from the spies that came back and gave the ill report and they said, God has brought us here to be killed by the sword of giants. Are you kidding me? I wish we had died in Egypt. I wish we had died in Egypt. Look with me in Numbers 14, 1. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. Verse 2, and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt. Isn't that a terrible profession? God delivered them from the bondage of Egypt, and all they're talking about is going and dying in Egypt. Let's go backwards. We'll go backwards. This is hard, so let's go back. This is tough. The plowing is hard. Let's just go back to the way it was. If we'd only died in the land of Egypt, if we had only died in this wilderness, verse 3, why has the Lord brought us out of this land? To fall by the sword. He's trying to give them a promised land. But it took plowing. They weren't willing to do the plowing. They couldn't believe that they could kill giants. Oh, no, we can't, we can't, that's too hard, too difficult, plowing, too, too hard. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let's get a new leader and let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back. I'm not going back anywhere. I'm not returning to Egypt. I'm not going back. You know, someone, someone said to me during this time of, of COVID shutdown, she said, you know, the church and the earth today will never be the same. I say the church and the earth today better be better. It better be stronger. It better be more influential. It better be more anointed. It better be more Holy Ghost. It better be more faith-filled. It better be more praise and worship. It better be more. Come on, church of God. There better be more glory. There better be more anointing. There better be more unction. And the church and the people of God better grow a spine and get some guts because there's some plowing to do. The devil wants to take this earth. He wants to take it away from us. We better hang on and not only hang on, 
on, but take more ground, plow up more ground, sow more seed, see a greater harvest in the days to come. It doesn't offend me when people say church will never be the same. I agree, it can't be the same. It's got to be red hot, man. It's got to be fired up. It's got to be full of the Holy Ghost. It's got to be faith church. There is so much tradition and junk and ritual and nonsense in the body of Christ. And maybe during this COVID mess, all of that will get shaken out of us and we'll get back to the Word of God, walking by faith, living in the anointing, doing great things for Jesus, even if it's difficult. Hallelujah. 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 So I'm looking forward. No man putting his hand to the plow and looking back. That ain't me. I'm looking forward. My hands are affixed to the plow. I'm looking forward and not back. Yeah, forward is work. Behind me is ease. Been there, done that. That's ease. Forward is forward where the reward is at, the harvest is at, the fruitfulness is at. Do you want to eat of the fruit of your labors? Well, you got to labor. Hallelujah. No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Now, the kingdom is the king's dominion. That's the way where we get the word kingdom from, king's dominion. Where the will of the king and the word of the king and the influence of the king is manifest is where the king's kingdom is. His word is law. His will is manifest. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. That's, that's what the Bible says he preached all the time, kingdom of God. That's what he preached. And Jesus said to his 12 when he sent them out, preach the kingdom of God. And to the 70 when he sent them out, preach the kingdom of God. And he says, if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Why? You're not looking at the right thing. How can you preach the kingdom of God when you're not even plowing for the kingdom of God? You're, if you don't believe in it, how can you preach it? You're not fit for it. Does it work for you? But the kingdom of God is God's will and God's way. It is God's healing. It is God's miracles. It is God's prosperity. It is God's peace that passes all understanding. It is the joy of the Lord that is our strength. It is the protection of angels. It is authority over devils. The kingdom of God is the king's dominion. We pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. We're wanting kingdom dominion in the earth today. We're citizens of the kingdom right now but if i if i'm not looking for the kingdom manifestation in my life how am i ever going to see it if i'm looking back i'm never going to see the kingdom not fit for the kingdom this is why the Lord, when he sent out the 70, he said, go preach the kingdom. Heal the sick, preach the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom. And then he said in Luke 10 and 9, he said, heal the sick there. Say to them, so heal the sick. Do you see those words right there on the screen? Heal the sick. That was his commission to them. Heal the sick. And once you've healed them, say to them, now that they're healed, the kingdom of God just touch you. The kingdom of God just touched you. Healing is the kingdom of God. Prosperity is the kingdom of God. Peace over stormy seas is the kingdom of God. Authority over devils is the kingdom of God. Heal them and say to them, the kingdom just touched you. Why did Jesus cast out devils? He's the king of the kingdom. Devils don't belong in the kingdom. Why did Jesus heal the sick? Sickness doesn't belong in the kingdom. He was exercising his dominion as a king in his kingdom and sickness doesn't belong there. So if I'm going to put my hand to the plow and I'm looking at the kingdom, I want to be fit for the kingdom, I'm going after God's healing. I'm going after God's prosperity. I'm going after a peace that passes all understanding. I'm going after having authority over devils. I'm, I'm going for the whole package. I want everything... A citizen of the kingdom has been given by way of our kingdom constitution, which is the word of God. I want it all. 
I want it all. He died to give it to me. Why wouldn't I want? I would insult him if I turned it down. Why did Jesus die to give me all the benefits of the, of the cross? If I, if I refuse it, well, isn't that insulting? Man, Jesus said, I died to give you salvation. Why would you refuse it? I died to give you healing. Why would you refuse it? I died to give you prosperity. Why would you refuse it? I died to give you peace that passes all understanding. Why would you refuse that? Because I'm not willing to plow it up and receive the seed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The seed of God's healing, the seed of God's anointing, the seed of God's word. God wants to heal you. God wants to save you. God wants to, uh, to uh, strengthen you. God wants to prosper you. God wants to, and, and, and people, believers, sitting in the pews, people, not you guys, you're living on a different diet, glory to God. But people sitting in the pews in traditional experiences, re religiosity, experiences with the Lord, that seed of God's blessing hits the soil and bounces off because it's rocky, because it's wayward, because it's thorny, it bounces off. I don't believe God wants to heal me, that soil says. I don't believe God wants to prosper me, that soil says. In fact, religion has been teaching us so long that God makes us sick, that God makes us broke, that God takes everything away from us because He's trying to teach us something. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Jesus says it's the devil that comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and life abundantly. That's what Jesus called the kingdom, life and life abundantly. Hallelujah. That's kingdom life, life and life abundantly. Ho! Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, it is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, bringing it to a close. It takes faith to plow. Religion doesn't plow. Tradition doesn't plow. Not for long. It takes faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Harvest, fruitfulness, blessing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not yet seen. Well, when you don't see it there, you look over your shoulder. I want to see something. Oh, well, I can see Egypt. Been there. I know what that looks like. I can see each. I can see the old life, but I haven't seen my blessing yet. Amen. Oh, but you got to plow and you got to sow some seed so that harvest comes in. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Faith is the confidence. Faith is the substance. Substance means confidence of things hoped for. Hoped for means expectation. Faith, the New Living Translation says, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Do you believe it's going to happen? Do you believe it's going to happen? I believe the best days for this church are ahead of us. Oh, yeah, I do. I believe the best days for this church are ahead of us. I believe God is going to do things that you could never, ever, ever, ever without the anointing of the Holy Spirit ever imagine in your life. Glory to God. I believe that these 24 acres are not supposed to be vacant and just growing grass for hay. I believe there's supposed to be an inspiration center on it. I believe there's supposed to be a youth gym on it. I, suppose, I believe there's supposed to be a Bible school on it. I mean, man, I've got vision. I said I've got vision. But it's going to take some plowing it's going to take some plowing it's going to take some plowing and I'm not afraid of it in fact I'm excited about it glory to God I'm married to such a faith woman I'm married to such a faith woman you know what she, I, I told Debbie I said listen there's some rebuilding ahead of us and she didn't pause for a second she said put your hand to the plow let's do this thing and and she says you know what there is so much better ahead of us than what we have already seen. It says, you just get ready for this thing. You just get ready for this thing. Glory to God. I'm looking forward to such a dynamic youth department. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm looking forward to such a dynamic Bible 
uh, college. Glory to God. I mean, I listen, I've been trying to wrap my head around this thing for so long. Bible college, Bible college, Bible college. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not thinking in terms of what a normal Bible college traditional uh, curriculum is. Because I went to Bible college. I know what the curriculum is. You take your Old Testament studies. You take your New Testament studies. You take your epistle studies. You take your major doctrine studies. You take a, It's all about the who, the what, the when, the where. And they never tell you anything about how faith operates. You get out of there, and you get out of there knowing who the kings were, who the prophets were, what starts the Bible, what ends the Bible. But you never know what the principles of faith are. I want a Bible college where ministers can come in and will actually build their faith. We'll teach them how to plow the ground and hang in there and get the kingdom of God built in the earth today. I, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward. I tell you what, I wake up in the in the wee hours of the morning. I have vision for a library. I have vision for inspiration center. I have a vision for an inspiration center that has a home ec department where we teach kids how to cook a meal, where we teach kids life skills, where we teach our youngsters. Somebody listen to me now. Where we teach our youngsters how to invest their money so they're wealthy by the time they're 40. Glory to God. Where, where we, where we get them out of dependency on debt, where we get them into the wealth zone. Glory to God. Listen, I'm looking for, praise, well, praise the Lord. I'm, I want to, I want to, but we got to get, we got to get to an end here. Glory to God. So listen, we're, we're in a plowing stage and uh, we're rebuilding. Uh, there's Grandview Church has got some plowing to do. And, um, the family isn't all gathered together yet. And that's not a complaint because I understand uh, where people are at at, diff at different stages of where people are at. I get it. And so that's not a, a complaint at all. It just simply means that we've got to, we've got to uh, timeline some things. And we've got to put some things on timeline. But we've got to put our hand to the plow. We, we're, this, listen, it's not going to happen just by happenstance. It's going to happen by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord is looking. How many of y'all are willing to put your hand to the plow, the Lord says? How many of y'all are willing to get in the field, the Lord says? Because, listen, we've got to replow some land that's already been plowed so we can get some seed back in that land. I am determined to preach faith like I have never Never preached faith before. I am determined. Listen, I will tell you something. We had folks go in this body. We had folks afflicted with COVID. We had folks that fought that battle. And it wasn't one or two. It was plenty of folks. And Debbie and I were in constant com communication, either by phone or text or one way or another with folks, all the way through it, almost on a daily basis, if not every single day. And to a person, in the, in the heat of the battle, to a person, it was faith, faith. Faith, 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 faith. Glory to God. I said, Debbie, these are the strongest believers. Thank God. These are the strongest believers. They've heard the word. They believe the word. They're living the word. They're acting on the word. Listen. What I was not getting back. I wasn't getting back an oh, poor me message. I was getting back, Lord. Pastor, I'm living in victory. I, my temperature may be 103 right now, but I'm coming through this thing. I've got victory, Pastor. I've got victory, Pastor. And you do have victory. And you do have victory. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There are churches that will throw in the towel. There are churches that will look at the potential of the fields too hard to go back and do it again. No, I'm not doing it. And they're going to miss their opportunity. And then there are churches that will say, faith always works. 
And if we've done it once, let's do it bigger the second time. Let's do it bigger the second time. Let's do it bigger, better, greater, more anointed. Hallelujah. Let's do it. Let's do it. There's people that are going to look at a field. I said, there's people that are going to look at the field and say, you know what? we got to replow this thing. But, you know, let's plow a little bigger. Hallelujah. Let's plow a little deeper. Glory to God. Let's put in more seed than what there was before. Let's believe God for bigger. Hallelujah. Let's believe God for more. Hallelujah. Let's believe God for greater. Hallelujah. In fact, let's praise bigger. Let's pray bigger. Let's prophesy bigger. Let's declare bigger. Glory to God. Amen. Let's put her hand to the plow. Let's get her done. Get her done. Everybody say, get her done. Get her done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we, when we plow, we till the ground. Break it up. So seed can get in. Break it up so seed can get in. We have to be so mindful, prayerful, loving of our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Reaching out. Reaching out. Because we're a family. And the family's got to come back together. We've got to get everybody back together. And that time is coming. I said it's coming. And we got to reach out, and we got to be mindful of, and we got to pray for and encourage. And um, praise the Lord. Because there's, there's things ahead of us that need to be done. In the absence of some folks, other folks are going to have to step up. It's just the way it is. Because things have to get done. There, there's some folks that aren't comfortable coming back yet because there's underlying health conditions and um, God hasn't given them peace to come back and I understand that but that does not mean that what they used to do is meant to be undone or not to go covered that somebody else needs to step up and see that thing come to pass so when they do come back they they're inheriting something that's strong and up and running and ready to go in Jesus' name. I'm closing on this verse, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows is what he shall also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap flesh, of the flesh shall reap corruption. He that sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Here it is, verse 9. Let us not grow weary. Everybody say that out loud. Let us not grow weary. Plowing is weary. It can be very weary. And let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In due season we shall reap. Say it with me. In due season we shall reap. Do you believe that? If it wasn't true, it wouldn't be in that verse. Don't grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, you absolutely, without question, unqualified, beyond doubt, you will reap. The only thing that's going to keep us from reaping is if we get tired and quit. I'm not a quitter. Are you a quitter? I'm not a quitter. I never, ever quit. Hallelujah. I never quit. I never, ever quit. Talked about it a time or two, but never done it. Amen. Amen. I wasn't allowed to when I grew up. I couldn't quit anything. I, if I signed up, I did it till it was done. I was ne- How many of y'all were raised that way? I was never allowed to quit anything. 
When I was in martial arts, and, and, and you were really good at it. I wasn't. I, I was terrible. When I was in martial arts as a kid, I took it for years and years. It, as a kid, man, I'd get knocked down, beat up, thrown across the ring. Oh, it was bloody. It was a mess. It was terrible to watch. And, and I'd be getting knocked down for the umpteenth time. I, I always got back up. I always Every single time I got back up. I never stayed down. I remember I was fighting this one guy. They always put me up against these guys bigger, stronger, faster than me. Always. And I remember the guy saying, he, he just keeps getting back up. He says, Sensei, tell him to stay down. I never stayed down. I will never stay down. I'm telling you right now, I, am, I will never, ever quit. I will never stay down. Why? Because Jesus didn't quit on me. He went all the way to the cross. He went to the grave. He was resurrected. He sits on the right hand of the Father, and he's anointing me right now to put my hand to the plow, and he doesn't want to see me quit. And I'm telling you, don't quit don't quit don't quit don't quit don't quit in Jesus name and the church said amen and amen will you stand with me oh bless the Lord bless the Lord bless the Lord now here's my question I wonder in Luke chapter 9 he sent out the 12 and Luke chapter 10, he sent out 70. But between those were these guys. Lord, I'll follow you, but first I got to do something else. I wonder if any of those guys were included in the 70 that he sent out with authority over devils, with authority over sickness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't think so because we don't hear about them. He sent out 12 that had absolute power over hell and could heal the sick and preach the gospel. He sent out the 70, absolute power over hell, heal the sick, preach the gospel. And somehow there wasn't a connection with those three guys at the end of Luke 9, you're missing the authority, you're missing the power, you're missing the gospel, you're missing the healing anointing. What is the matter with you guys? I don't want to miss nothing. I don't want to miss nothing. I don't want to miss nothing. Do you? No. 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 We're putting our hand to the plow, church. I'm going to tell you right now, plowing's not easy, but that's where the harvest is at. We want to see kids come into the kingdom. We want to see teens come into the kingdom. We want to see folks come into the kingdom. We want to see families come into the kingdom. We want to see that inspiration center up. We want to see that Bible college up. We want to see that Holy Ghost library up. We want to see that gymnasium up. I'm telling you, we want to see some stuff. We want to see some stuff. Come on. We want to see some stuff. Hallelujah.